Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. President Zuma sprung something of a surprise in announcing that Tina Jomat Peterson would be Energy Minister. Terence Kramer has been gauging reaction and joins me to discuss the appointment. Hi, Terence. Hi. Is it fair to say that the appointment was not only met with surprise, but some concerns as well? Yes, I think um, it was one of the surprise uh, picks by President Zuma. There were a number of others, but I think in the energy space, we've just had a, a change in that ministry. So we had uh, Dupo Peters acting there for a number of years, and then uh, in the middle of last year, uh, Dukobe Ben Martins was put in as energy minister. And I think the view was that that was to create continuity into the next min administration. So when there was an announcement of another change in the minister, I think there was a surprise, which also led to some concern, because I think there's a view that this is a complex uh, area to manage. That, uh, there are a number of moving parts, and there are a number of worries and uh, su supply side concerns in this area. So for a new minister to get his or her, or in this case her, head around that very quickly um, and deal with those decisively is not only urgent, but there's a concern that maybe there's going to be now a delay around doing that. So I think, yes, definitely surprise and definitely an element of concern. And I think some of that also arose from the minister's previous role in agriculture, uh, fisheries and forestry, where I think there were some issues that arose. There was a public protector investigation into the fishing vessels tender. And, uh, you know, she didn't come out with glowing colours. And I think, you know, we can't have that sort of instability in the energy space. So th there was some turbulence around that. And, uh, you know, given that we need a very firm uh, and decisive uh, decisions to be made and firm uh, uh, leadership to have any of that turbulence spilling over into energy would be a problem. So I think that's where the concern is coming. And how critical is this portfolio at this time in South Africa's history? Yes, well, I think besides the platinum industry strike, which I think is dragging uh, the economy down, we saw the very poor uh, uh, growth figures for um, the first quarter, and uh, really on the back of what's happening in the platinum industry. It's the electricity supply sector that has uh, investors and business uh, quite worried. And it's been an issue since prior to 2008, but really came to the front and center in, in 2008 when we had those that rotational load shedding and where we, we've, uh, you know, seen it since then, um, you know, South Africa really struggling with the uh, security of supply in the electricity space. But there's also a number of other energy issues uh, knocking around, not just in electricity. We've had, uh, we've got cleaner fuels um, regulations coming in, and yet we don't really have clear time frames and visibility of how that whole equation is going to work out. And then, you know, we're wanting to introduce biofuels. We're wanting renewable energy program to continue. And there's this whole element of uh, independent power producers. So, uh, and bringing them in to, to sort of stabilize the electricity system. So I think uh, the, it's a very crucial part of the equ economic equation at the moment. That shortage, together with the platinum strike, is a definite weight and uh, provides a sense of foreboding for foreign and domestic investment. And what are some of the first um, priorities that the energy minister will have to tackle? Well, I think the first priority is to gain the trust of the energy sector. I think that because of the surprise, because of the concern, I think uh, the, uh, the new minister is going to have to engage quite quickly and have consultations and get to touch the flesh, you know, get across the table, really, um, get, you know, build a rapport with the energy sector because of the surprise, with the business sector as well, to say, Yes, she knows maybe that she doesn't have her, you know, the, her head around every aspect of energy, but she uh, can give them some degree of confidence that on the key issues um, she has, uh, has, her, has her head around it and that she's able to um, both from a political perspective have the political clout as well as from her department the technocratic capability to act decisively. So I think that winning some confidence, winning trust, I think for her is going to be a, a top priority. But then in the actual energy milieu, I think we, we have to face this uh, electricity shortfall uh, head on. And we're having to face it at a time when I think coordination between 
the Department of Energy and the Department of Public Enterprises and the Department of Treasury in particular is going to be very vital. So we've got new ministers in all of these portfolios, which uh, I think, uh, you know, given that we need actually some confidence and I think people are wanting some continuity, having all three crucial portfolios change. You know, that those ministers are needing to get together um, and to really discuss, for instance, I think uh, a, a top priority is the whole issue of ESCOM and its uh, financial st sustainability. It's not within the domain of the energy minister. This is really in the domain more of public enterprises and treasury, but it's a, it's a coordination that the energy can bring in and also pro providing the policy vision and the p policy foundation for that coordination. So. Uh, uh, Janet Peterson is going to have a key role to play within that cluster of ministers, and whether um, you know uh, the, the finance minister and the new um, public enterprises minister are aware of that need for coordination is also something we are we quite uncertain about. But g given that we we can take and it's given that uh, everyone knows about the electricity crisis and an ESCOM crisis, I think there will be some priority given to that issue. But then there's, can we sustain the momentum around the renewable energy program? You know, as uh, De Kobe Martins departed, just uh, his parting shot was to say that he was going to extend the bidding round three for renewable energies program. That's complicated because I think bids were put in at certain exchange rates and certain uh, offers were made that, you know, you know, I don't know whether those can be extended by, it's now six months later. And then there's the whole issue of the base load procurement programs. Those were also promised, but we haven't actually seen those tenders being delivered. So those, we need some decisive action there. We need to, you know, give certainty around the renewable energy program. With the extension, what is what is the knock-on effect to bid round, bid window four, which is supposed to happen in a couple of months' time? And then with the base load programs, are we ready to now start acting on the coal and the gas? And I think there's still some uncertainty around for instance, uh, you know, the, the gas utilisation plan, master plan, that hasn't been finalised. So I think the Minister's going to have to make some quick decisions around that. And then, of course, in the, the broader energy space, you know, this perennial problem of uh, the distribution sector and electricity, which is a very complex one and involves so many different parts because there's so many municipalities involved. But it is a weak link, and I think we're going to see it becoming emerging more and more as a weak link. Now, there's concern that can Eskom get us through this winter, for instance. Eskom might have the generating capacity, but, you know, with the copper theft rising again, I think uh, given the economic climate, I think crime and theft and those sort of things are a worry. And uh, with the distribution sector vulnerable and those combinations could be toxic during this winter. So there might be enough generation, but is it going, coming to our sockets, our plug sockets? Is it coming to our light bulbs? because of that, those weaknesses and the backlogs in investment and the backlogs in securing that investment. So I think that's another big, big issue. And then I mentioned earlier the whole issue of the cleaner fuels program, the automotive industry, which in terms of the industrial policy action plan has become a key cog in that wheel. And you know, we've seen a lot of investments around um, a new platforms that are coming in where, uh, from the luxury cars right through to the buckies, right through to the, the normal sedans. We're seeing investment, we're seeing component investment, but these cars need to be exported because we're scaling up production and we need to have, um, I think, the, the fuel that goes into those cars needs to be of a, a certain standard, of that Euro 5 standard. And refineries are nowhere near that uh, at this stage. And there was a plan to start, you know, doing those big capital investments that are needed. Um, and we need the minister to make some decisions, and again, with Treasury in a coordinated way, around how is the cost recovery going to mechanism going to work? How can those projects get off the ground? And in the interim, how can the new fleets of cars that are riding off the factory line be fueled? Are we going to have to raise imports? Does that mean we're going to have to have massive more, more storage and pipeline capacity? I think we have the pipeline capacity, but the storage issues are coming to the fore. So, as you can see, there's is a lot on the minister, in the minister's in tray, and I think she's going to have to one get around this, her head around this energy sector, build that trust relationship with the, the energy practitioners, and then really make some serious and urgent decisions that need to be made. Thanks, Terence. That is the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching, and join us again next time for more news analysis.